So during the network event, ask, when you go to registration, ask the person who organized the event. So I'm kind of touching on a couple of points that Jules said. <laughs> so, hi, my name's Olivia. Here's my badge. Hi. Oh, Do you know who put on the event today? Oh. Oh. It's you. Can we ask? Oh, Gina. Gina. Oh. Can you point Gina out for me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there's two ladies that are wearing black. Which one? Is there something? Gina? Okay, Gina with the longer hair? Okay. <laughs> the reason I'm stressing that is because as a, a volunteer at the re registration table, really know who put on the event because you're the first person they see that represents the organization. At the end of the day, they're going to say, oh, the girl with the red dress over at registration, I didn't get her name. But try to be try to be impactful. Try to make it memorable. Try to go above and beyond. Think of this event as yours. You are the host of the event. So you need to really uh, know the organization that you're uh, volunteering for, especially know the people who are organizing the event. Uh, also, bring your own badge if possible. There's nothing worse than, you know, a, there's no markers, no Sharpies, no nothing, and you're having to write your name badge somewhere. Invest in $20. $20 for a badge. That's two cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> two cocktails and no tip. And then <laughs> so, so when you enter a room or an event, uh, scout the room. See who you know. Approach a colleague who's with someone you don't know and get introduced. So that's a nice way to kind of walk into a room, and it's not a cold situation where you don't know anyone, but rather, you know, go to Tom, and he's talking to another gentleman. It's a nice way of having a warm introduction. And then ask that new friend to introduce you to people that he knows. Now that you've gotten to know Mark through Tom, hi, Mark, can you introduce me to some of your colleagues? Who do you work with? I'd like to... I'd like to know more of the people who are attending this event. And then own the event. When you walk into the room, make it your event. It's all about you. It's all the presence. It's all the confidence that you show when you walk into a room and you own it. Because I have done, and I'll tell you a little story, because I used to volunteer at MOLA, Museum of Latin American Art. Every time I volunteered, I always dressed nice. I, I dressed as though I worked there. So I always had a volunteer badge. And you'll, you would be surprised how many people would come up to me and say, oh, can you help me locate this? Oh, can you help me do that? Oh, I was looking to connect with so-and-so. And it was because I had the confidence and I walked up with my head high. I owned the museum. The museum was my second home. And you can tell. You can tell the people who really are passionate about what they do. And you just exude the energy and people tend to gravitate towards you. So own every event that you attend. <laughs> so here we have a couple people talking, someone's wondering, you know, I wish I was in that group, or someone please talk to me. You know, we all have been in those situations, and I know I have gone to events where I mentally shut off. You know, I'm so prepared, I'm so excited, I have all my cards, I get there and I freeze. So, I'm not the best. Yeah, I'm not always up there, and sometimes I do lose confidence depending on the event that I go to. But, you know, that's part of life. I can't always be on. I'm not an on and off switch. And I'm not asking everyone to be there, but just being prepared, and no matter even how prepared you are, you still might have a stumbling block. So how do you break into a conversation uh, with someone that you don't know? Hopefully this gentleman here... <laughs> will know him and say, hey, Bill, who are you? It was nice seeing you. It was great seeing you at the event the other week. So now you can enter their little circle, and he will introduce you to, hopefully, to the other people that are around him. So now that we spoke about what to do before the event, let's talk about what we do during the event. So present yourself and give your quick elevator speech. Hi, my name's Olivia. I have this other company, too. Um, um, owner of TCM, uh, we do, we, what do I do? Uh, we're in the merchandise brand, we're in the brand merchandise, um, I should have practiced my elevator speech for the other company. <laughs> <laughs> See how even I am not prepared. But anyway, so give your quick elevator speech. 
Ask the person what they do and what they know that the organization, ask the person what they do and what they know that the organization, the event, and their relationship to them. So by that, I mean, if you, let's take Asusena. I know that Asusena has Latina Golfers Association. Ask her how she knows Marcella. Is there a bond? And, you know, Asusena would probably say, I know Marcella through Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. I was just at her Super Bowl party. <laughs> uh, you can also ask your connections to see if uh, they're looking to someone to connect with. So I go to an event and I see Stephanie. Stephanie, you know, I came to the event look, hoping to look for someone who has life insurance. Do you have anyone who has life insurance? Because I have a situation and someone just asked me and I'd like to recommend someone you know. I'm right here. <laughs> yes, Olivia, let me take you over to her. Exactly. I met her last week. I'll introduce you to her today. So try to find something in common with everyone that you meet. So when you're giving your speech, you talk a little bit about yourself. Um, I like golfing. I like tennis. I like to go camping. And for me, camping is resort camping. Not <laughs> And then always regroup. If you go with friends, regroup in about 45 minutes to an hour. So when you do have that buddy system, you can everyone go their own separate ways. And then regroup. Ask who they met. You know, I met someone who's really interesting and they love, they're passionate about museums. Or someone just went on a trip and they stayed at the same hotel that you just did. So there's also commonality. So regroup a little bit. Kind of... Uh, uh, do your elevator speech once again, and then you can always change the tone of how you're going to network for the rest of the event. Either you've already met five or six people of quality, not just quantity, because you know I'm here to get 20 business cards, and as we all know, when we get 20 business cards, most of the time we don't really do much with them, and there's only a handful that we do something, and you know we go above and beyond to reach out to them. Uh, make introductions, so introduce everyone that you know, including the new people that you just met. It makes you look like you know more people than you do. I do write notes on the back of business cards. Uh, that is just something that's dear to my heart because I know that the minute I step away, my, my, my mindset's going to change. So I am a firm believer of writing a little note. And it could be, you know, someone with the yellow jacket. I met um, Eddie through Mark, and he's a gentleman in the gray shirt or something like that. So I am very visual, so for me, writing on the back of business cards is really important. And then when leaving an event, be certain to say goodbye to everyone you met, even a nice little wave or a blank or, or something in your hand to make sure and acknowledge the person before you leave. That's always a key. So I tend to be one of those people who leaves kind of when the event is over. Um, so, to the very end. Yeah, to the very end. But you know, there, there's something nice because sometimes those are the best conversations you will have. You won't have a nice conversation because there was too many people, but at the end, those who remain are probably people who are friends, and you just make really nice connections beyond just networking. Mm -hmm.